evening and welcome. I am Amarachi Ubani. Tonight, gunmen kill at least 10 persons after invading a market in a community in Port Harcourt River State. Police vow to arrest the culprits. Wife of the President, Aisha Buhari, calls for probe of 3.2 billion naira budgetary allocation to Astor Villa Clinic. Describes facilities at the medical center as deplorable. NMPC reacts to allegation of insubordination by the Minister of State for Petroleum and Resources against the corporation's GMD as his due process followed on $26 billion contract. And Liberian President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf calls for peaceful elections as the country holds presidential polls tomorrow. On business news tonight, World Bank and International Monetary Fund expected to review Nigeria's 2017 GDP growth ahead of annual meetings in Washington this week. On sports news, Gabon football star Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, only African among 30 nominees for the 2017 Ballon d'Or. And from Abuja, ECOWAS court moves to promote alternative dispute resolution as EU pledges support for regional body standby force. We begin tonight with the sad tale of the deadly attack on two communities in Port Harcourt, the River State capital, where at least 10 people, including a couple, were killed by gunmen. The attack, which happened in the early hours of today, caught residents uh, unaware as the assailants shot sporadically at everyone in sight. Our correspondent, Emmanuel Array, reports. Tragedy struck in the early hours of this morning at Umbo Shimiri community in Obiakbo local government area of River State when gunmen attacked the community, opened fire on unsuspecting residents, many of whom are traders and leaving at least 10 persons dead. That figure is according to the police. Some community sources, however, say it could be as high as over 15 persons, as many of them were seen carrying away their dead to be buried and calling on security agencies to come to their aid, informing us as well that it's not the first time that this sort of attack will be taking place in that community and they expect that this time something must be done to halt it. Just yesterday, the governors of the South South and South Eastern states got together and one of the issues that topped the agenda of discussion was security of their region. Many of the governors will tell you that they have provided and they continue to provide logistical support to security agencies in their various states to ensure that they are on top of the game. The governor of River State, Yesom Wike, will tell you that he has been leading that train, providing all the logistical support for the security agencies in the state to ensure that the safety of lives and property is guaranteed. But this attack at Umbo Shimiri is another wake-up call that the security agencies should rise up to the occasion and deliver on their responsibilities. But we can also tell you that the River State Police Command have it on authority, according to them, the names of those suspected to be behind this crime and they will be declared wanted as soon as possible. We'll bring you details of that as the story unfolds. Emmanuel Ere, reporting for Channels Television News. In the meantime, the police in River State have vowed to arrest the perpetrators of the deadly attack in the state and also beef up security across the state. The police commissioner, Zaki Ahmed, told us that his TAC team is already on the trail of the killers. Some gunmen came from the river and attacked a food stop market where people uh, I can see some of them are destitute sleeping in an open market, mini market for that matter, and started shooting indiscriminately. And uh, at the end of the day, we had about uh, 10 corpses. That is the situation we found ourselves today. And uh, we made adequate development. Um, the situation is under control. Uh, if you can go there, you can see our men all over. We have taken over that place. There is relative calm and peace in that area. 
uh, we are getting information. I assure you, by the grace of God, I will get them arrested. Uh, one of our primary responsibilities is uh, uh, protection of life and property. And uh, the other one is uh, you know, prevention and detection of crime. So we are going to detect those who are behind this dastardly act. It may not be out of place to say that Nigerians should brace up for more revelations about the rising rate of corrupt activities in government agencies. The latest revelation is coming from the wife of the president who is calling for a probe into how the 3.2 billion naira budgets for the medical center at the presidential villa has been spent. Mrs. Aisha Buhari made the request at a meeting with the wives of the 36 state governors in Abuja where issues of reproductive, maternal and adolescent health were discussed. She criticized the lack of facilities at the clinic in spite of the huge budgetary allocation. The president's wife says she discovered the poor state of facility when she fell ill a few weeks ago and decided to go for treatment at the clinic instead of traveling abroad. The first lady of Nigeria and her counterparts from the 36 states arrived at a banquet hall. The challenges of the nation's health delivery system was the major focus, but no one was prepared for the other side of the story. That was one question no one had answers to, so she finished. of health at the occasion also gave some disturbing statistics. 50% of children below the age of five die owing to malnutrition, while 200,000 newborn babies die every year. The maternal mortality ratio is 576 per 100,000 life births. Maternal mortality ratio remains unacceptably high, despite reduction of maternal mortality globally. A strong advocacy by your excellencies to your governors to invest in health as they do to other physical infrastructure like roads, to me, will be most essential desire. In recent decades, the global community has made significant progress in saving the lives of children. But this time around, the call for a more homegrown solution intensifies to include scaling up health interventions and addressing the root causes of poverty. From the presidential villa, Gloria Umezuki, Channel Television News. To take a further look at the revelations coming from the wife of the president on the state of the Aso Villa Medical Center, I'm being joined on the News at 10 by a public affairs analyst and a legal practitioner, Mr. G.T. Ogunye. Thank you for joining us on the News at 10. It's my pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. Is, is this surprising to you, what the wife of the president is saying about the Aso Villa Medical Center? Would you call it a bombshell? I'm surprised that the wife of the president is expressing uh, dissatisfaction 
with the deplorable state of uh, the Asura Clinic because they are the residents of the place. Um, here was uh, the wife of the president telling Nigerians what was happening there. Uh, Nigerian voted for the president and thereby the wife came to live with the president in Asso Rock. And they are the, <laughs> that's their residence. Well, in, in, in her defense, she's obviously never had any reason to go there. She fell ill a few weeks ago and had the opportunity to the point I'm make, the center. The point I'm making is that yeah, by processes, the president being uh, the chief resident of Asso Rock ought to know that the hospital is functioning normally. The president doesn't need to be sick, nor the f first lady need to fall ill before knowing the state of uh, that hospital. That's the point I'm making. Because if they don't know, or if they are shocked, what do they expect Nigerians to feel about that? That's the point I'm making. Oh, interesting points there. So do you think that this revelation or this admittance will now stare, you know, the stare them in the direction of, you know, this probe rather will stare them in the direction of better health uh, system for I doubt it very much. I doubt Nigeria. it very much. You know, we, we, we offer a lot of platitudes in this country. Just speak to problems without uh, putting up a serious attempt to solve those problems. The Minister of Health was there and was regaling Nigerians uh, with uh, solid statistics of uh, maternal health uh, situation in, in the country. And so they go to conferences, they go to workshops and reel out all these terrible statistics and data of how precarious a health situation is in this country. I know the guys done. That's my problem. Uh, what they said there is just a metaphor for what is going on all over the country. If in Asso Rock Clinic, the X-ray machine is not working. You don't expect the X-ray machine in all our teaching hospitals to be working also. That's what it symbolizes. That's what it signifies. That's why I call it a metaphor for the deplorable state of healthcare delivery system all over the country. And so um, Nigerians expect that there will be a change. Uh, when people talk about change, it's not just in what people say. It's also indeed, it's in everything. You know, we, we expect that there will be changes in all these uh, facets and that Nigeria will no longer have to go overseas mm -hmm. for medical attention. Too often, I've said this uh, many times, Nigerians go to India to die. Uh, in one particular year, in 2013 or so, uh, just as Aluko was being returned to Nigeria, his remains, Ojuku was being returned, Umbu was being returned from England. That's not what we should be. That's not where we are. We are supposed to be as a country. It, it, it really does say a lot. I mean, the health system you already know is already de deteriorating in Nigeria. But the president's wife is calling for a probe into 3.2 billion naira uh, budget for the medical center. Do you think anything will come out of this? I mean, that's a huge amount of money that should signify, you know, certain changes in the medical center. At well, least. Not, well, well, now that the wife of the president is saying that I expect something to come. Why? Because just last week. The daughter, Zara Buhari, you know, took to Instagram and talked about non-availability of uh, Panadol or, or analgesic in that same Asura clinic. And a week thereafter, the wife of the president, you know, uh, threw this bombshell, as you call it. So now that the daughter of the president and the wife of the president have said this, so we expect that this will lead to something, uh, an investigation at least, just so that our people will know you know, where their money uh, has gone into. Mr. Njiti Ogoyen, thank you so much for joining us on the News at 10. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Thanks. In part two after the break, court denies bail to former Edo State Universal Basic Education Board chairman and four other persons accused of fraud demands them in prison custody. Please stay with us. Mm -hmm.